acquisition, Eagle Eye due diligence, real estate entrepreneurship skills, knowledge, opportunities, and more on law and property with Prince Joel Esquire. Law and property, 8.30 a.m. every Monday on the Mutual 4.9 FM. Join the conversation on Instagram at PrinceJoel.LP, Twitter at PrinceJoel underscore LP, WhatsApp on 0803-486-9295. Law and property with Prince Joel, probably sponsored by Property Development Company. Sponsorship and an arts. Call 0809-158-7777. I just want to start out with this song this morning because I tell you that is a big, big prayer that everything we put our hands upon this month of March is definitely going to work. My name is Ife and of course I've got... Um, the um, property, the seasoned real estate investment court here in the studios of the Reach 104.9 FM. A very beautiful morning to you, Prince Joel Esquire. Thank you, Ify. Wonderful morning to you. Happy and, New Month. Yeah, happy New Month. Today is first. Yeah, yeah first of March. Good morning to Nigerians. Good morning to you, more life. Okay. In fact, I came in dancing that song. Exactly. That song <laughs> is moving the swag and the meaning, you know. It's raising the anointing. Everything you put That's your hand will work. You know, I love that song. Amen. Yeah. Everything we put our hands upon is going to work in the month of our But of course, uh, today is um, the sixth episode, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So for those of you that have been following us from the very first episode, well, first, second, third, fourth, and now we are here. And today, uh, Prince John, can you just tell us what we will be talking about today? Because uh, this topic actually affects everybody in Nigeria. It's either you're on this side or you're on this side. Exactly. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, this morning, we will be looking at a very sensitive topic. Uh -huh. And this topic is actually a popular demand. Okay? Uh -huh. And so, I had to move a little from land okay. and just look at something I call the right of a landlord and tenant in Nigeria. That's now, the problem. beauty, you know, the, the <laughs> beauty of owning a property, okay, okay for commercial purpose or uh -huh. purposes, it's for you to generate income. It closely referred to as another means of wealth creation. Uh -huh. One of the reasons why people invest in property is either to use it for your personal use, okay. to use it for commercial use. Uh -huh. Now, commercial, it's for you to bring generate revenue. Of course. Now. If you live in the urban city, 50% of people or 60% of people who live in the urban city, mm -hmm. a lot of them are on rent. A lot of properties in urban cities are for commercial purpose. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, I will quickly, quickly look at the rights of a tenant, the right of a landlord. Before mm -hmm. you even acquire your own property, you would have been a tenant somewhere. Yes, okay, And by the time you eventually acquire... Okay, there it's for it to also generate revenue for mm -hmm. you. Okay, so this morning we'll be looking at it. And first and foremost is to lay the foundation of the laws that govern uh, tenancy and landlord rights in Nigeria mm -hmm. and in Imo State in particular. Of course, tenancy matters in Imo State are generally governed by the recovery of premises law and the rent control and premises edict of 1985 as applicable in Imo State. Those are the two basic laws that govern um, um, and tenancy laws in Nigeria, the recovery of premises law and the rent control and premises edict 
of 1985 okay. as applicable in Imo states. Mm -hmm. Now, as old as this law is, some legislators have also made move to repeal the rent control and premises edict of 1994. I know in particular uh, the honorable member from the Ubuta State constituency of Imo State, he made efforts um, of moving a motion for the repeal of this law. Okay. Now, the bill is actually aimed at strengthening the tenancy relationship between landlords and tenants in the states, protecting and safeguarding the rights of both the landlord mm -hmm. and that of the tenant. Okay. I do not know at the moment the state and the position of that law, but for me it's a good one. And if that law is passed into, if that bill is passed into law, I believe that the positive result will be very rewarding. Mm. Now, laying that foundation, a landlord and a tenant are usually landlord and tenant relationship very very established in several cases. Okay. okay? Now, now, uh, for, of course, you know I'm a lawyer, so. Uh, when you make definitions like this, you trace it to the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a landlord and tenancy relationship is really established when the tenant pays the agreed rent, which may be either yearly, okay. weekly, or monthly. Okay, that relationship is established once there is rent. Okay, and one very popular case that I've also established that is the case of Ogene and Sons Limited. And Amorowa and another, it's a 1986 case. Let me not bore you with that. Okay. okay, now, except in very special cases, payment of rent is in concrete evidence, and that establishes the relationship between a landlord and a tenant. All I have just said is that for there to be an evidence of tenancy, at the landlord and tenant relationship, mm -hmm. the word rent must be a condition, must be evidence. Okay, okay. now, one of those rights of a tenant is right to a written agreement okay right to a written agreement now a lot of people move into property without taking cognizance of the fact that they need their written agreement written tenancy agreement every tenant has a right to an agreement whether it is oral or whether it is written whether oral or written whether or oral, yeah it is advised it is advised that agreements between both parties should be written exactly very important very okay important. because the written agreement become easier to make recourse to in the event of where well, in the event of dispute exactly yes the tenant is expected to go through the agreement mm -hmm. now if you are signing an agreement and you fail to go through it thoroughly mm -hmm. you may be signing a debt warrant for you <laughs> you know so you need to go through that mm -hmm. a proper tenancy agreement consists or contains the following details I will run through them very carefully okay. and you'll see that in today practice a lot of landlords a lot of uh, agents mm -hmm. keep some of this condition number one I'll run through them quickly your name as well as the name of the landlord must be well spelled out must be well written details of the property that is being rented out the location of the property you are renting as well as the futures of that, uh, the features that come with the property. Mm -hmm. The period of time for which the rent will cover, the amount of money that is being paid as rent, the date payment was made, the modalities for an upward review of the rent. Modality for an upward review of the rent, the duration of quick notice to be served by the landlord, the okay. person responsible for repairs of work, person responsible for repairs of work within and around the property. The person who bears the responsibility for expenses like water, electricity, and uh, sanitation bills. The second one I will run through quickly is the right of issuance of receipt of payment. The receipt of payment is an acknowledgement from the landlord or an agent that a rent payment has been made, made by the tenant. It must contain the name of the landlord and the tenant, the amount paid, and the date of such payments. The property for which such payment is made, okay. the duration that such payment will cover, and the signature of the receiver must also be on the receipt. Okay. It is an actionable offense to refuse, very critical, it is an actionable offense to refuse to issue a receipt for rent paid and received. Okay. Are you understanding that? Okay. It is your right as a tenant to be issued a receipt upon payment of rent. Where the payment is only a part of the whole, it should also be received and stated. Okay? It is a first and foremost a proof of payment. Okay? It helps 
if you find yourself in court, it helps the court to calculate the precise time and frame to evaluate notice. Mm -hmm. The receipt is needed for the calculation of men's profits, needed to counter and clear allegations of your refusal or inability to adhere to timely payment and all that. Now, for the receipt of payments to be considered valid, it must contain the following. Uh, your name as well as the name of the landlord, the specific amount of money that you that was paid as rent, the date the payment was made, the type of property of which rent was paid, for instance, was it a two-bedroom apartment, a duplex, a mini-flat, a one-room, the period of time that the rent paid is expected to cover, for instance, was it rent paid to cover a two-year rent mm -hmm. or one year, all that must be uh, in that receipt. Another one quickly is a right to peaceful enjoyment of property. Now, one of the reasons why you must um, own your property, I mean, you must, uh, one of the proof or one of the rights mm -hmm. for the tenant is that when you pay this rent, you must, you must enjoy the property. And that's what I call right to peaceful enjoyment of property. When a tenant pays his rent and is issued a receipt, it is landlords granting him the right to peaceful enjoyment. Peaceful enjoyment of the property. Once this is done, he determines the entrance, the usage, safety can even be determined. But you know, I'm really very interested about this uh, <laughs> right to peaceful enjoyment because uh -huh. right here in the East, I know it's not very common, but many times you find out that a lot of uh, landlords actually stay in the same building. A number of landlords actually stay in the same building with their tenants. Okay, this reminds me of the face me face you paro paro. The <laughs> extent to which you have paid for landlord has nothing to do with it. So he has no right to. He has no right to. If he comes in, that is trespass. There. Once you have paid rent and your tenancy have started, the landlord comes there without your consent. He has a supervisory role with your consent okay so that with even my consent. yes even if he wants to come and supervise inspect the property mm -hmm. he needs your consent he must agree with you he cannot wake up in the morning and just walk into your property that he wants to supervise you because he's the landlord that is trespass so if he does that i can sue him you can sue him oh, even though i don't encourage um, <laughs> any little thing go to court you know okay. let's look at the quick one uh, okay. right to a valid quick notice it is very important that very we important. understand that as a tenant you have rights to a valid paid notice. A tenant uh, cannot be thrown out of his apartment unless there is a strict compliance by the landlord with relevant recovery of premises law. Recovery of premises law that are valid have the paid notice of the landlord intention to terminate, to terminate or quit the tenants of the of um, the, quit the tenancy of the tenant must be in writing. Must be written. Now it could be a weekly one. Okay. It could be monthly. And it could be um, six months, which is uh, statutory. Now, depending on what you pay, if you're paying weekly, you are entitled to a weekly. Uh, if you're paying weekly, you're entitled to a notice of one week. If you're paying monthly, you're entitled to a minimum notice of one month. If you are paying yearly, you're entitled to a statutory notice of six months. Okay? Oh. Uh, yes, very important. Now, what if the tenant is in arrears of rent? Now, there are also authorities of law, okay, as the side there, that once you are in arrears, okay, once you're in arrears of rent, the landlord only owes you seven days' notice to throw you out, okay? Hmm. And this has been established in a very popular case known as the case of Odutola and another versus Paper Sack Nigeria Limited. It's a 2006 case. Now, the court held that a tenant whose tenancy has expired and is now owing the landlord is only entitled to a seven days notice and not quit notice okay hmm. giving such uh, tenant notice uh, tenant quit notice will be to be on the say on the side of surplusage okay so if you're owing your landlord and you're in arrears strictly speaking the landlord owes you a seven days notice to get you out of that property okay right to compulsory seven days notice in the course of um in the event of recovery of premises okay. your landlord owes you that seven days to determine your uh, tenancy and that he does by serving you a, a seven days notice now let me quickly run through uh, um the right of a landlord and i will go to the fraudulent part of it okay mm -hmm. now the right of a landlord one right to issue and not to issue a quick notice i've also explained that before a right to renew tenancy. The right, this right gives the landlord authority over his property. 
though it must be clearly stated from the onset, the right to tenancy renewal clause should be included in the tenancy agreement before both parties put pen to paper. Very important. Once the tenant uh, agrees and the same are agreed, time to apply for tenancy renewal and mode of application, the landlord is not mandated to renew a tenant rent. This is a good way for landlord to do away with a non uh, conformist uh, those who refuse to abide by that mm -hmm. now it's also important to say that if you and the landlord have expressly agreed okay expressly agreed in writing and work out the modality for your rent uh, uh, renewal okay. okay that becomes binding between the two of you okay. of course right to review rent i mentioned that right not to reimburse a tenant now if you do not have the express consent of your landlord and you go about to do a major renovation, your landlord does not owe you a reimbursement, okay? So you, so, so you did that from your own? You did that, yeah. So if you must seek for reimbursement, uh -huh. you must have a solid agreement, understanding with your landlord, you will be repairing this, this, this and you need his written, written authorization. Uh -huh. If there's no written authorization, if there's no written consent, you go about to renovate and all of that, you're on a long thing, you're on your own. Uh -huh. And so it's very important that even as... Um, um, we we work towards owning our own property okay. that we must we must um, allow these rules to guide us hmm. the landlord has his own rights the tenant has his own rights okay and if these things are put down together in an agreement with mm -hmm. the tenancy agreement I see a lot of I see a lot of um, uh, loophole agreements that people uh, do today okay so uh, hopefully when we come back uh, from this break you tell us exactly some of these I will be talking about the fraudulent part of this whole I, uh, this whole thing. Hmm. Strong topic to actually, you know, start off your Monday with. But of course, we will go on a very short break. And when we return, it's still, uh, you know, more loopholes, uh, more tips. And then we will officially open the phone lines. This is Law and Property with Prince Joel Esquire. Do you have a dream of owning your own landed property? Then take advantage of this opportunity by investing in our asset. Invest in Evo State. Invest in Evo Land. Maxville. Location. On right. Promo price. 3.5 million naira for 464 square meters. And 5.5 million naira for 928 square meters. Tehila Garden. Location. Undokbala Community of Wellright. Size. 50 feet by 100 feet. Price. 1.62 million naira. Max Garden. Location. Off Potakot Road of Wellright. Price, 2 million naira for 464 square meters and 4 million naira for 928 square meters. Flourish City, location, 13 minutes drive from Control of Market. Price, 3.6 million naira and 10% on outright payment. Size, 464 square meters. Land documents and instrumental payments are available. For inquiries, call or send a WhatsApp message to 0809-158-7777 or send an email to info at propertygallery.com.ng You can also visit our website on www.propertygallery.com.ng Proudly powered by Property Gallery .com Limited. Are you finding it difficult to get desired properties across Nigeria that suit your budget? Or are you looking for a platform that provides a wider range to market your properties? Then it sure should be propertygallery.com.ng At propertygallery.com.ng You can buy, sell, or lease any property of your choice. We have affordable and verified properties across Nigeria. Our vision is to create transparency in the real estate industry by creating ways to reduce the time it takes for property hunters to secure a good property that suits them. And our mission is to maximize the use of modern technology to enhance innovations in the real estate industry in Nigeria. For more inquiries, visit www.propertygallery.com.ng. Follow us on all our social media handles at The Property NG or give us a call to 0809-158-7777 or 0802-270-0302 or send a mail to info at propertygallery.com.ng. Welcome back to Law and Property with Prince Joe Esquire on the Reach 104.9 FM Aware. Today we have been looking at the rights of a landlord and tenant in Nigeria. So before we open the phone lines officially, Prince Joe, tell us some of the yes. you know 
fraudulent stuff. Yeah, common fraud. Happen. Yes, common frauds perpetrated by landlords in Nigeria. <laughs> You're exposing and, them and, right and, now. And in Imo State in particular. Oh my goodness. Imo State in particular. Uh -huh. I have also fallen victim of it. Okay. But thank God for the knowledge of law. Mm -hmm. Number one is not inserting the rent review clause. So they re they, they give out a property to you and they fail to insert that rent review. You stay in that property one year after they increase it by 100%. Hmm. If they insert it, uh, they will be constrained to do that. So they avoid it. Demanding rent for more than more more than one year, okay? Mm -hmm. The law has made it very clear that tenants, I mean, the tenancy, I mean, that rent should be one year. But you see, they deliberately call it more than one year, especially, okay. when, you, especially when you like the property. Mm -hmm. Allowing incoming tenants to inherit existing electricity bills mm. and forcing the new tenants to pay that bill. This happens a whole lot. It happens. <laughs> it happens. I am also coming back home. So in trying to acquire property too, I have seen all of this and I've also received calls, messages on this stuff, mm -hmm. which is the main reason why I'm treating it this morning. Okay. Collecting caution fees from incoming tenants that it close with a clause to refund them when they intend to move out. Oh na la that's calm. That's calm. Okay, negligent in in, in, in caring uh, I mean negligence in carrying out repairs okay as stated in tenancy agreement now in tenancy agreement you state that you will repair xyz and all that for where once you enter now voicemail hmm. getting a corrupt why am i why why, why are you why, exposing why, why the landlords this morning but very funny very funny we see these things happen okay, okay? getting corrupt professionals <clears throat> who go through the back door to evict a tenant and just one day you're sleeping and they serve you a cut the court order that you are being asked to evict. Meanwhile, they went through the back door. They didn't go mm. through a due process. Okay, we see this fraud. It happens. But then again, okay? sorry to cut you short. How then can you tell, you know, which which one, which order has gone through due process? No, there is a process. You must have been served a notice. That's okay. the first one. Okay. There's more particularly, even if you're owing, mm -hmm. the seven days notice before they commence the court process to evict you. Okay, now All fraud right. perpetrated by tenants. Tenants also have their own. Okay, which is very common, handing over the apartment to another tenant without the consent of the landlord. It's wrong. It's very wrong. Okay, if you must do that, it must be with the consent of the landlord. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why in the tenancy agreement, there is a provision or a clause that says that you will do that on the, or with the consent of the landlord. So if the consent of the landlord is not there, we see people now, they hand over to their younger brother, their younger mm -hmm. brother hand over to the next one, the next one hand over to the, you know, that is fraud. Using the rented apartment for a purpose which is not meant for. So you've rented for a uh, residential purpose. Mm -hmm. The next thing you're turning into a business apartment. That is wrong. You're killing the, the facility. Okay? Packing out of the premises without paying the outstanding electricity bills. A lot of people do it. And maliciously damaging the apartment with intention to hurt the landlord. Anybody who does this should seek for repentance this morning. On a very serious note. Because the landlord has labored to do what? To put that investment together. Okay. Okay. We come here and we talk about the best way to invest in property. Mm -hmm. And somebody has used the entire earning, the entire savings to invest in a property to be yielding income, to be yielding uh, 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 rentals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And somebody goes there to hurt it. The day you get your own, somebody will do the same to you. Mm -hmm. Zero nine zero seven thousand one zero four nine. The phone lines are officially open, so do well to call in. Remember that today we are looking at the rights of a landlord and a tenant, Tenants, especially yeah. in Nigeria and, of course, particularly here in Imo yeah, State. And he has actually exposed some landlords. So, in case you're a tenant and there's something fishy going on and you really want some clarification, the barrister, no. The real estate coach Better. Yes, is here yeah. to actually advise you in that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, my question is, uh, as soon my rent expires and I take my lower rent to my landlord and receive it to collect it and say, I'm not telling you, you are going to be in that house. Now, what do I do? Come again. Take it slowly so we can actually understand your question. Assuming my rent expires and I go to the room with my landlord and he says no, the next day he starts me with this notice. How do I go about it? Okay, thank you. Okay, that is very, very wrong. If the landlord wants to serve you quick notice, he should serve you quick notice while your rent is still subsisting. Once your rent has expired, all you need to do is to pay the rent. Where he refuses to pay the rent, then he goes through the due process. 
Okay, now a lot of landlords do this very often. If you don't want the tenant, you sell the tenant the notice to quit before the tenant's rent expires, hmm. not after the rent has expired. Where do you want the person to start going, hoping that he will renew the rent? And the next thing you use, a lot of them will bring in the police and begin to harass the person. That is criminal. Hmm. Stand for your right. Get a lawyer to represent you. Hmm. Get a lawyer to represent you. 090 That's the number to call. And of course, the number to send your WhatsApp messages to. And just in case you're tuning in, this is Law and Property with Prince Joel Esquire. And today he is actually shaking some tables here in the city of Oweri. Now you actually talked about um, this right to issue quit notice. And this is very important because in one of our programs here on the Reach FM, we've actually talked about, you know, the right of a landlord and the right of a tenant. But then again, with this issue of um, quit notice, but let me take this call first. Hello. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, Sebastian. Welcome. I assume I have a house or a shop that somebody is paying, and the person is paying, uh, let me say, uh, 5,000, uh, 5,000, uh, and a lot of people in those places are paying more than that. Now, the person's rent will expire on uh, the of July. I want to go and say, but after that, uh, you'll be paying 7000 or uh, 6000 Is it good now or when they still expire? Okay, I understand you. You know, everybody wants to make money, especially when your property is adding value or there is a value appreciation, which is the whole idea of investing in property. Now, it is just decent for you to give your tenant a due notice. Okay, you don't take How the tenant... Notice? You don't take the now before the rent expires, three months, six months to the expiration of the rent. You inform the tenant so that the tenant can plan. Okay, he can plan and also decide whether he's going to stay in the property or if he's not going to stay in the property. So if a rent is for one year, not to stop you at the middle of the year or quarter to the end of the year, you write to your tenant and tell your tenant, because of the way things are going in the country, I am reviewing my rent upward. But it is also important that from the beginning, you have made provision for rent review in the tenancy agreement. Because if you do that, okay, you don't even need extra letter. That you get the point. If it was in the, the tenancy agreement. agreement from the beginning, where that was, you know, not there, where that is not there, all you just need to do is to give me sufficient notice. But, you know, according to the law, is there a particular time frame for this? The tenancy thing? agreement captures that. Tenancy agreement will tell you that after you stay in this property for two years, mm -hmm. there will be a rent review. Now, the rent review will be subject to what property goes on around there. You can also do evaluation. Okay. Now, even if you want to increase on your own, you can also, we've seen situations where you increase by one million and the tenant will say, ah, landlord is too much, or why not make it uh, 250? Mm -hmm. And there's an understanding negotiation. Landlord was okay, fine, let's leave it at the middle and they arrive at something. Mm -hmm. So it is very wrong to take tenants unaware at the expiration of their rent. What were you doing all through the one year before the expiration of the rent? Hmm. But, you know, as um, a real estate investment coach, do you do you actually see this happen all the time? It does happen all the time. I see that, especially where I'm coming from. And even the few period I've stayed in Imo State, I also see that happen. A lot of landlords, their agents, and in most cases, their lawyers, avoid rent review clause. And it's deliberate hmm. so that they will take you from behind. Hmm. They will take you on our way. And you send the property just one year, and the next time, they're telling you that the property has been increased. So if you don't like you go out, at that point, it becomes difficult for you to go out. As so when you've invested so much in the property. Hmm. I am saying this morning, it is wrong. Let us have a change of mind. Let's do things professionally the way it's done all over the world and in more civilized countries. Okay. We so can do that here. Of course, we can actually do that here. 090 I think you've already answered my question with regards to quick notices because that, of course, happens a lot. I mean, I've had um, a lot of people actually complain about not being given adequate notices. So I want to believe that they have actually, you know, received answers with regards to that. But, you know, you mentioned something that really interested me, and it has to do with the notice given to yearly tenants. Uh -huh. Then you mentioned six months for yearly tenants, uh -huh. uh, one month for uh, monthly, tenant. monthly tenants, and then one week for weekly tenants. Now, we know that here, you know, where you hardly ever see any landlord uh -huh. tell you that he's giving you his shop or his apartment uh -huh. for six months or one week. Uh -huh. Well, let's take this call first. Hello? 
Good morning. Okay, can you turn on the volume on your radio set, Wisdom? All right, go ahead. What's your question? My question goes like this one. Hello? Well, listening, go ahead. Just turn down the volume on your radio set and go ahead. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have a little case now. And then, yes. Um, my problem goes like this. My event is supposed to expire December. Uh, my land was going to arrive for me November, telling me of agreement. And I told them I'm not going to pay, I need to pay for it. Uh, after by, by February, uh, he, he now tells me uh, 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 seven days notice that I'm, 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 I'm going in the area of rent or something like that. So I told them I'm not going to pay. I didn't make, I didn't do, I didn't go there for it. So I'm not the body standard to advise me on what to do. Okay, I think it's, it, let, let me just leave my number because our time is up. Uh, uh, just uh, private chat me and I'll give you, I'll guide you more. It, this, we see these things every day. And the number is 80 uh, I take it again, 80 Just chat me up, I, I will guide you. I would always say that going to court is usually not the best. Going to court should be the last option. Landlord and tenant matter can be resolved through alternative dispute resolution, hmm. through ADR. They reach a common ground, okay? You shift a bit, the landlord shift a bit, and you reach a common ground. Of what benefit is it for us to spend years in court dragging one, I mean, it, it's not, a, let it be the last option. Okay, yeah. let it be the last option. So one more time, your numbers, as we call it around. At 80 Again, for the last time. 080 20 okay. If it's important, I say this. Okay, before In we investing, have... see, property is wealth creation. Okay. okay, and when you invest, you want to see this property generate income. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're saying the best investment to do is in real estate. And when you do it, your relationship with your tenants the best. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot do that, hire a professional to handle it for you. Yes, of course. In case you can do that, hire a professional. So for those of you that have other questions, just call the numbers and he will definitely give you legal advice. That, of course, has been a time on uh, Law and Property with Prince Joe Esquire. It's the first day in the month of March and, of course, time is really not a friend on this program. But do well to join us same time next week as we look at other interesting topics on law and property with Prince Joe Esquire. Good morning.